All right, guys, so today we are going to be testing five different tools from Amazon. But before we do that, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. And if you don't know, Testicular Cancer Awareness Month is coming up. And because of that, Manscaped has teamed up with the Testicular Cancer Society. So a portion of all sales will be donated to the Testicular Cancer Society. Now let's talk about the Performance Package 3.0. The first two and most important things that you get are a the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, and the Lawnmower 3.0. Both of these are cordless, rechargeable, they both have a 90 minute battery life, they both have skin safe technology so you can't cut or nick yourself, they're both waterproof, and the Lawnmower 3.0 even has a little light so that you can see what you're doing. So both of these are very nice. The other things that you get, you get a bottle of Crop Reviver Ball Toner, you also get a bottle of ball deodorant, and for a limited time, you get two free gifts. The first one being this leather toiletry bag, which is very nice. And then you will also get a free pair of the anti-chafing boxer briefs, which are also very nice. So that is what comes in the Performance Package 3.0. So if you're interested in the Performance Package 3.0 or any of these other items, you can click the link in the top of my description. If you use code TUBE, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. All right, so the first tool that we're gonna be testing is called the Wallet Ninja. Now, the Wallet Ninja has a bunch of different tools. I believe it's supposed to be 18 in one, but we're just obviously gonna be testing the most important ones. The bottle opener, the uh, can opener, and uh, the cell phone stand. And then it has these things on the side. I want to call wrenches, but it's not a wrench. It's like a bolt turner cutout thing. Whatever you want to call it, it's to turn a bolt or a nut. Those are the things that we're going to test out, see how they work. So firstly, since I've already kind of messed around with it and I pretty much already know that this feature sucks, we're going to test the cell phone stand, which it has a little cutout in the card right here. And you're supposed to take like a credit card, debit card, whatever, slide it in here. You're supposed to use the lip to set your phone on. I had, I did see some pictures online of this phone stand from like websites that were selling this. And there was probably three or four of them that had a picture of a phone sitting like this vertical on this thing, which is absolutely not gonna work whatsoever. I don't know what universe that's gonna work in. Obviously you're supposed to Turn your phone sideways, which honestly still kind of sucks. Yeah, it's kind of at, it's like kind of tilted up a little bit. But if you're looking at this, like if I'm sitting here and I wanted to use this, it's almost, it's like not even that, for, like it's not even sitting up that much because of the card bends. If you had, and your phone obviously sl slides off. If you had like a metal card, maybe it would be better, but to me, it, there's really not a whole lot different between just laying your phone down and having it on this thing because it's such a slight little angle up. So I don't really see the point in it. I'm sure maybe somebody could find a use for it or something. Or maybe if you'd use something other than a plastic card, like I said, maybe like a metal card, it would work better. But as far as I'm concerned, that kind of sucks. And if you like, like bump the table, it just slides off. Not really a big fan of it. So let's move on, test the bottle opener. And I just so happened to have one of my favorite drinks in the world, a dill pickle soda that I have left over from the video where I tried a bunch of different drinks, which were horrible. Ow, that kind of hurts your hand if you go that way. Let's go this way. To be fair, it is a twist off lid, but that did work fine. That actually worked better than I thought. I thought that the, uh, this card's a little bit, not super flimsy, but it, you can tell the metal is you know, not the greatest. So I kind of figured that, or not kind of figured, I wasn't gonna be surprised if the tab that you use on the bottle part would have bent a little bit, but it didn't, so that's good. Might as well go ahead and take a drink of this since I'm sure everybody wants me to. It's just as bad as it was the first time. Next, let's go ahead and try to open a can of tuna. See how well this can opener works. Looks like, What? Am I really this stupid? Th this part right here looks like it's sharp, like it should be the part that pierces into a, to a can, right? Oh, oh, I think I might got, I think I, I, think 
Like, come on, I got somewhere. Now you gotta go at this angle. Either I'm stupid, or this just really doesn't work. I feel like this is just not, not working right. See, I pierced the can. Enough of a lip on this can or something? Oh, did we get somewhere? Oh, maybe you gotta go. Ooh, okay, so if you go at a, there's a very, very specific angle. So you have to put it on the edge of the can and twist it this way and almost twist it to where you feel like you're gonna like bend the card and then rock it forward. And then you can very slowly. Oh, this is actually, this is actually working pretty good. Getting to the end here. Oh, maybe just. Ah, well, we're pretty much we're pretty much there. There's the open can of tuna. I mean, it works. It's not. It definitely wouldn't be my first choice if I had like an option to use a regular can opener. Even like a just a regular handheld can opener would be better than this. But. I mean, if this is all you had and your lunch was in a can and you needed to get it open, you could definitely do it. Definitely not my first choice. It kind of, it honestly kind of sucks. <laughs> like it, it gets the job done. It just kind of sucks. So I guess that's that. All right, so now we're gonna test out the, like I said, the bolt turners, whatever you want to call them. So I have two different size uh, lag bolts, obviously being screwed into wood. This one is, this size, so let's see if we can turn it. Oh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Oh, that's not bad, that's actually working. Let's see if we can get it most of the way in there. It slipped off once, I can tell I can see so bad whenever I start to turn it that it wants to slip off so bad. I have a feeling once it gets down lower that it's gonna try to slip off. Oh, there it slipped off a little bit. Oop. Oh, once it starts getting a little little tough, we might run into some problems. Oh, it, it wants to slip so bad. It's actually kind of tearing up the side of the bolt. Come on, I'm, I'm actually really impressed. It fits on there nice and tight. Then as I turn, you can see the gap gets bigger and bigger because it's like, we're just at the edge where it's trying to spread itself out and slip. Oh, we're, we're, we're dangerously close. Oh, come on. It seems like now it kind of seems like it's a little bit uh, like hit or miss on whether or not. So this is actually, Oh, just but I can just feel it. It's just chewing the crap out of this thing. You can see that with every turn. Oh, that time it slipped. It just it wants to slip. We're not we're not getting any grip at all anymore. I'm gonna turn this just with a, a regular ratchet just to see how much force it needs to turn it. Just to you know see how little force it's taking for this thing to slip. Yeah. So you can see it doesn't take much force at all to tighten this thing down and this thing is just is slipping left and right. Do this one. This bolt head is a this head is a little bit smaller than this one, so maybe that'll kind of help out a little bit, give it a little bit more of an advantage or something, or maybe it'll make it worse. <laughs> that slipped on the first one. This is uh not looking that good. I don't even think I'm going to I can't even get one turn out of this thing. So it turns out if it's smaller, it's even worse. I can't even get a little, not even the tiniest little bit of a turn out of it. I wonder if this is like in a knot or something. Let's turn this one, turn this one by hand too. See how tight it is. It's literally, it's literally almost nothing. It's the same as the last one. This thing is just, it's just bad. It just, it sucks. So that last test was going to be the last one with the Wild Ninja <clears throat> until I realized that this little cutout up here 
<clears throat> it says that it is a letter opener slash nail puller. I didn't pick up on, before that it said it was a nail puller, so that is a completely different story, and that is an extremely bold claim, in my opinion. So I have two different types of nails. <clears throat> I have this one, which is like a like a drywall nail, and then I have this one, which is just like a I don't know, regular nail, but obviously one is way bigger than the other. Possibly, maybe, has a slight chance of pulling this one out, but I do not think that it has any chance at all of pulling this one out. Put this here. <laughs> well, I think, I think that solves that. This is definitely not gonna pull out any nails now. I didn't think that this metal was hard enough to break. Or was a, like, yeah, it was hard enough to be brittle enough to break. I figured that it would just, you know, bend. So, I think that solves it. It's not gonna pull out any nails. All right, our next tool is going to be the Motor City Snake Bit Drill Bit Extender. This is the thing that I have been the most excited for out of all of the tools, just because it looks so cool. Oh! It comes with a screwdriver. I didn't know it came with a screwdriver. I was wondering why the box was so big if it was just gonna be, it was just gonna be this thing. I wasn't expecting that. It also comes with bits. It's obviously like an extension and you're supposed to be able to just bend it in whichever way you want so that you can get to all the hard to reach places or whatever. The main thing, I don't know what it is exactly that like runs through this thing. I'm assuming some type of cable or something. I'm very curious to see how much torque this cable can handle before it snaps because I feel like that's going to be the weakest link. So let's go ahead and try to put some screws in and let's see how it holds up. So our first test is going to be super easy. We just have two different types of screws, just a regular Phillips head screw and then a little bit longer and I think a little bit bigger, uh, like a deck screw. So let's go ahead and bend this. Let's bend it like this, like in kind of a U shape. Oh, and might I add that this screwdriver ratchets. So it didn't just include a screwdriver, it's a ratcheting screwdriver, which I think is a really nice touch. Hmm. I think the torque is gonna be a problem for this thing. I feel whatever is in this tube, I can already feel it kind of flexing. So this might not go all that great. Oh, I mean, we're getting it all the way in. Oh, you can kind of, you can kind of tell how the, the, this outer tube is kind of like starting to spiral because it's twisting with the torque of like the, whatever's in there. It worked. It's not a great sign though. It's going to be a little bit tougher. Let's go at like a 90 degree angle. Oh, it's doing, it's doing that, that spiral thing again. I can feel it. Ah, oh, see? So... If I don't support this up here, then you can see it wants to just kind of twist itself around, which I guess is kind of natural. Oh, I don't like the way this feels. Oh, I heard something crack. There is, I don't know, I don't know if you can see, but I there's a lot of flex without this without this down here moving. Go ahead and get it done. I mean, that's all the way in, so it held up. It's just, I have a sneaking suspicion that something about this size that takes about this much torque is probably going to be really close to the limit of this thing before it snaps. But, I mean, we're going to see. So, this thing, obviously, like I said, it includes this screwdriver, but on the box, it shows a picture of a drill. So supposedly you should be able to use a drill with it. I have a feeling this is probably not going to be that great. It shows it on the box, so let's hook it up to a drill. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the tip of that? How it's like clearly bent. It's like clearly like wobbling out of center. Let's try to take this out. You see how that twists like that? I don't know what that noise was. It wasn't, it sounds like it was stripping out, but it wasn't stripping out. Different spot. Try to put this back in. It 
did not like it whenever I hit the bottom. It still works though. They got it in. I guess it's time to move up to something a little bit bigger. So this could be the end. This is, good. This is a uh, 13 64th drill bit. I want to see if you can <clears throat> drill a hole with this thing. We're going to stay like 90 degrees. That actually works really good. It doesn't really have a, a way to like clasp onto it. But that was, that was way better than I thought. I figured that uh, it would have more torque on it than it did. Drilling holes is gonna be actually pretty useful. That's probably what this would actually be really good for. Not so much anything that takes a lot of torque but like drilling a hole at a weird angle, I feel like that could be, be very useful. So we gotta see what the breaking point is. So I can pretty much guarantee that this is where this thing's life is going to end. We're going to do a four inch lag bolt. We'll start off there. And we're gonna be using an impact instead of a drill. This poor thing. Oh, that's, I kinda don't wanna hold on to it. Oh, did it already break? There's metal flakes like coming from all over the place, but and it's not, I think all of the torque from the impact is getting lost somewhere along the line. It's kind of screwing it in, but there's also all these metal flakes going everywhere, and I don't know. Let's just keep going. That could have just been really bad. That could have hit me in the face. Yeah, this thing's still working. All right, let's. Oh, it just sheared it right off. And it looks like it's some type of a of a spring or something. Oh, here we go. That's exactly what it is, or what it looks like anyway. Like a lot of braided cables, basically, on top of each other. And then it just kinda sheared itself off. So that kinda sucks. It's not really, not really super heavy duty, but if you used this like a normal sane person and you just wanted to take like a little screw out here and there, maybe drill a hole or something, I think this would actually be really good, but just don't try to, you know, drive in four inch lag bolts with an impact. And then I think you'll be fine. So our next product is made by a company called Racco. There's like a million different people that make these, but it's one of these universal sockets that I'm sure you've all seen before. It's a three quarter socket. It's got like a bunch of like little pins and stuff in it that, so that way it can, it's supposed to, like the gimmick is that it's supposed to able, supposed to be able to quickly adapt to basically anything under a, under the size of three quarters. So, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I'm a, I don't especially know how durable it is, but we'll see. So I've got like a little hook here. A, I, I don't even know what this thing is. Then a couple more little bigger things. So let's see. Oh, that definitely is not a, not a good start. Okay, well that worked. I think part of the thing, or part of the thing is that, like you have to get it center for it to actually work good. Okay, let's go slow. Let's not be crazy. Oh, okay. That worked. Try something bigger. Okay, that worked really good. Try this. I mean, it went in at a weird angle. Probably, I probably started it crooked, but that was flawless. So that's a, that is a very good start. Now it's time for a true test. We got four more lag bolts getting progressively bigger in size. And by the end of this, especially once we get this one down, we're gonna, we'll, we will really know if this thing can take some serious abuse. Let's go. Can we not grab that one? there there's metal flakes all over the place maybe it had like a weird grip on it or something 
So far, I'm really impressed. I did not think that this would hold up to this much abuse. This thing, this is, this thing is really tough. I'm impressed. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this thing is good because honestly, I don't have any more tests for this thing because I didn't think it was gonna make it this far. I figured that by here, it would have like obliterated itself, but it's held up good. Nothing seems to be, nothing, I mean, nothing's fallen out of it. All the spring parts seem to be good. This thing works, it's good. So this, after driving these in here, this actually sets us up perfect for our next item which is the bionic wrench. This is another one of those items that is supposed to save you time because it's supposed to, I forget what the max size is, and I also don't know offhand what the smallest size is, but anything, you know, this size or this size in between, it's just supposed to, you know, make things easier so you can just jump from different size to different size just by simply squeezing it instead of like going back and forth to get different wrenches or whatever. So let's start with the smallest one. Oh, actually, this small one might be a little too small, to be honest. Oh, no, it's spinning it. Oh, wow, look at that. This also, these, or this bionic wrench, this, if this ends up, you know, being durable enough and not breaking, this would be useful for some things. I'm going to tell you right now, if you had to get in, like, a, to a, like a hard-to-reach spot, this would really suck. I can tell you one thing that's really annoying is how this thing just kind of slides off. All right, it works on this size. Let's just say we got that out. Now this one, ooh, I might have made, ooh, I think I made a miscalculation. This one is actually too small for it. So let's just go ahead and jump to this one. Oh, this thing, I feel like I have such a good grip with this thing. Yeah, on these bigger ones, this is actually really nice. All right, so that one's out of there. So far, I really like this thing. It's not, you know, it's obviously not perfect, but so far it's not bad. And I think that this would actually be a pretty good addition to like, like a, like a car toolbox or something. Like, you know, stuff that you would, that could be really beneficial in an emergency. No, the whole table's gonna try to move. It's holding on. Grip is not a problem with this thing at all. I thought, I figured maybe the, like these little, like metal pieces that slide back and forth, whatever mechanism pushes this, I thought maybe it would start to fail under like a lot of torque, but not at all. Look at that. So, I mean, there's no better way to say it. This thing works. You know, I can't speak for the longevity of it. It might not work, you know, it might not be like a, you might not be able to use this thing for years and years, but 100% if you needed this in a sticky situation, I have confidence that this would not fail you. It works, simple as that. So this last tool is a c complete and utter failure, which kind of sucks. I think it's called the snowflake tool because it's shaped like a snowflake. But whenever I ordered it, it has one, two, three, four, five. It has five of these bits on the end. When I ordered this, for some reason, I was thinking that these were Torx bits, but uh, I didn't realize until like 10 minutes ago that these are actually Allen heads and I don't have anything that's an Allen head to test this with. Then the other two are a Phillips and a flat head. So I was going to test the Phillips head and I put this little screw in the board and just from me going like this, just purely to see if this Phillips head was the same size as this screw so that it would be a fair test, I literally did this. I stuck it in there and I went like this just to see if it was the same size. And just from me doing that, I don't even know if you can see it, but I'll get a close-up of it. Just from me doing that, the screw literally stripped away all the metal from the tip of the Phillips head. So, like, this ha so I'm assuming this is made out of, like, recycled pop cans or something, because literally this, with no pressure, should not just completely strip away the Phillips head. This thing is complete garbage. I have another test for this that could be useful, so we'll do that instead. This is extremely hard to get on video, but you can see right here where 
chewed the corners off and it's all rounded from just barely putting any pressure and trying to turn it. So you can see how cheaply this thing is made. Well, as most of you probably could have guessed, this last test isn't really a test. This is really just a way for me to let out a little bit of my frustration onto Gary because we all know that it is Gary's fault that this thing turned into a giant flop. So this snowflake tool kind of looks like a ninja star, so we're gonna see if it works like a ninja star on Gary because it's his fault. I'm glad he has no head because it kinda, it's kinda creepy when he looks at me. All right, Gary. He might have he might have got like a little bit of a like a little bit of a scratch here or something. Other than that, he seems all right, which kind of sucks. I wish it would have hurt him a little more. And also, unfortunately, this thing looks like it's completely fine, which kind of sucks. So this thing can't even be used as a ninja star. So you can't this thing you can't even use it as anything. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anything else that you want to see me test, leave a comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.